What's up? Woo! I had hoped to come out to Tom Sawyer by Rush because there's a meaning behind the song in my first slide. There it is. Who's too young to know this? So I love this song. I find a lot of inspiration through music. And this song, the concept about it, if you look at the slide here, Monday, modern day warrior, free spirited, individual striding through the world wide eyed and purposeful. I think it's a lot of us. Plus, a lot of the hip hop I love, I can't dance. I'm as white as they come. So, if I came out to hip hop, it would have been ugly. So, thank you all for being here. Love it. Mini chat. So, my name is Matt Plapp, and I'm going to talk about who I am, tell you a little bit about myself, and then we'll get into this. I am a father and husband first. Uh, <laughs> The, uh, you know, my wife, 20, I guess 20 years, two weeks ago, uh, 24 years total, Paige and Cole. Paige and I just made shoes. I hydro dipped these. My wife was like, why are you going to take $300 pair of shoes between you and your daughter and ruin them? I'm like, because how the hell else do I get four hours with a 17-year-old? So it looks like we're going to start doing this more often. Uh, she actually was like, yeah, we could sell these. My wife's like, Matt. How are you going to sell stuff? I said, I did a million dollars last 12 months online. I think I can sell shoes to a couple people. So uh, <laughs> there you go. So I'm a marketer for, uh, after that. I've been in marketing since 1999. I sold radio advertising with my man Doug Smith back in the very back, who's now my director of sales. Uh, coach from a lot of people in here. Uh, I'm an author. I've got my second book, which you'll find out later on. Uh, I'm a CrossFitter. Anybody here do CrossFit? There you go. So 2010, I'm jogging up the stairs of my house, and my chest started bouncing. And I was a college football player. I was a DB. I was always athletic, and I'm like, the hell happened here? But it was Mountain Dew, Snickers bars, and cheese conies. And so I had to get back in shape. So I not only got into CrossFit, I bought a damn gym because <laughs> it's hard to walk into a gym and not be in shape. And so we own a CrossFit gym, the Tracks Fitness Lab in Erlanger, Kentucky. Uh, my slide went away there. And then started my agency in 2008. And we had a boat and RV dealership. Uh, we started in 99. So I had an interesting career. 1999, got out of college, went to radio advertising. My dad is a sales beast. He's a freak of nature. And taught me everything about sales and marketing and uh, how to walk on stage, how to speak. And in the sun, I guess it was uh, September of 99, we decided to open a boat and RV dealership together. And I went out and bought a book on Adobe Page Mill. And I'm not a tech person at all. I am now on accident, but I wasn't then. Went out and bought a book on Adobe Page Mill. We opened OutdoorConsignments.com. Don't go to it. It might be porn now because we haven't owned it for a while. <laughs> I learned that lesson on an expired domain a long time ago. You never know what ends up there from Ukraine or somewhere. And opened up the dealership. I worked both careers for four years. Worked in radio at a very high level. Was one of the top three salespeople for four years in Cincinnati in advertising. Uh, and then at the same time, we started the boat and RV dealership. By 2002, we got to a point where I had to leave and run the dealership, my brother and father. We grew it to $15 million a year in sales, three locations, and 40 employees. In 2004, I discovered SEO by complete accident. I can't tell the story. It's long. It's on YouTube. But put it this way. Yamaha pulled me aside and said, Matt, tell us how you're ranking ahead of us on Google. We were Yamaha's number three dealer in the, in the country. And I had to explain to them that I had no clue how and that I didn't do it. And they told me I wasn't in trouble. And I said, okay, well, we're doing all this stuff in chat rooms, which is you know, now Facebook groups. So that's how I got my start in the agency world. Anybody out here in my program or in my ROI experts group or watch my videos? There we go. Okay. I want to make sure you're here. So this is a lot of my, my people I'm here with. We've got a house down the street. We've got my man Luis here in the back. We've got... In the house, we've got like six Americans, and we've got Greece, Australia, Australia, Philippines, and Germany. And when I travel to events like TNC, like Billy Jean's events, I rent a house, and we have a big party, and we hang out. We do a lot of great stuff. And by the way, I'm here all weekend. If you want to, I know there's the app for scheduling networking. I have my own calendar, roiexperts.live slash mini chat. I have 30 minute increments every day until midnight, today, tomorrow, Sunday. I will meet with anybody. I'll help you do anything you want to do. Free of charge, don't care. That's how you get there. How did I get into coaching agencies? Well, this man right here is the, is, is the blame or credit. Billy Jean. 
This past Tuesday, September 10th, was my three-year anniversary where I bought a $4.95 flash drive from Billy. Anybody ever bought Billy shit? There you go. That's what he always says, buy my shit. I bought the flash drive. I, re I remember this when I was putting this presentation together. So two weeks ago, I scheduled this past Monday, because Billy was going to Bali with Tony Robbins on Tuesday. On Monday, I had Tony's office or, uh, Billy's office catered with the crack shack out there, and then we had a flash drive cake delivered. So I owe a lot to this guy because Billy showed me a path because at this point, up until 2016, I had 34 to 40 clients on average representing about 180 to 200 locations and 31 verticals, which is a hell of a lot. And that was me and Ashley, one team member. So we did a lot. And when I met Billy, he explained the idea of, Matt, you have nine restaurants and you have a program that you run with nine restaurants. Why aren't you using that for 100 restaurants? And I'm like, never thought of it. <laughs> Just thought of these nine that I knew. And so Billy put me on that path. And then back in 2017, where's Michelle? Michelle, where are you at? Michelle's right here. Michelle was one of the first people Billy said, hey, Matt, I want you to be a big brother. We're going to pick five people out of his entire program that fit these qualifications. You're one of them. Will you coach 10 people uh, and be a big brother, big sister, a big brother of the program. Michelle was one of my first agencies I got to coach. That got me in the path of coaching agencies, and I love it. So ever since then, when I coach agencies, two things come up all the time. By the way, this is Kevin. He's in the Canary Islands. Love him to death. Wish he was here. My goal is to get him here next year. But he's a guy I coach about every month. Awesome. He's an amazing guy. He's literally the Matt Plapp of the Canary Islands. Like, I watch him on video, and I'm like, I got to do that today. And then he calls me like, I did that because you did that yesterday. But that's Kevin. But there's two topics that always come up when I coach agencies. Number one, niche. Did these guys just kill it? Did they kill it? They're killing it. Jason, Brett, awesome. This is 2017. February 1st, 2017, Jace reached out because I met him through Billy. Billy Jean said, Jace, Brett, call Matt. He works in the restaurant vertical. You want to work with restaurants? We had a conversation about the importance of how it allows you to focus. Because at that point, I had realized it. I'm like, holy crap, this is gold. And I had a program that I had created called the ROI Engine. And so I was telling them some ideas about how they could focus on restaurants. Here's the key thing. Who in here has a coach? Listen to them. Because you know what happens when you listen to them? You take it to the next level. This is a year later. The next topic I get. Matt, how do we prove our work? Has anybody in here ever had a client say, prove what you're doing is working? I hope a lot of you. It's what happens. My clients constantly say, Matt, how do we know what we're doing is working? How do we know that Facebook's it, LinkedIn's it, Instagram's it? So I saw Jason Brett. They got an award at Billie Jean's event in the fall of 2017. They were crushing it. They were on the fast track. Jace called me up and said, Matt, I want to schedule some calls. We need to prove what we're doing. And that's when I showed them the ROI engine, what we have today. I said, guys, here's how I prove it. Through Facebook Messenger, through a systemized program and a dashboard. And walked them through it and, and gave them the advice there. And then they took it and ran with it. And that's the hardest part. Like, I've got a buddy of mine who's had my trainer at my gym I own for two years. He hasn't lost a pound. He doesn't listen. I've got another female friend who's lost 70 she listens like she, she won't even look at a donut. She's like walking this way. Before I get there, I want to say thank you to two people also. The guys before this, Dave and Philippe. I met them in the summer of 2017. I saw some of their videos. I knew enough about Zapier to be dangerous. I started seeing what they were doing. And like David and Philippe turned me into like a full-fledged ninja in Zapier. So the dudes know their shit. They're legit. They're awesome. And they crushed it too, right? I mean, selling $20 billion in an hour or whatever it was. It was something pretty big. So thank you to them because that's what gave me the ability to show you what I'm going to show you here in a minute. So there's two things in agencies, retention and attrition. Because if you don't retain clients, you're constantly doing what? Finding new ones. Selling. I'm going to give out some prizes if you guys answer. So you can't lose clients. A buddy of mine recently was telling me he's got a 60% retention burn rate every 90 days. I said, dude, I've lost one client in six months. I had another friend that was telling me 
30% cl- every, every nine people I talk to, I close three. Doug, I talked to 19 people last month. How many did I close? 19. Attention and retrition, and, and re- attention, uh, attrition and retention are the key. So let's talk about those items. This is Matt Plapp's, and I still have this spreadsheet. Let me tell you this, a story on this spreadsheet. It was uh, summer of 2009. I started my agency in 08. I had a gig with the Cincinnati Bengals and Cincinnati Reds. Yes, they're both terrible. But I had a contract with them helping with advertising. I had my agency at the same time. Sitting at the beach in Myrtle Beach, and I came up with this game plan. I called it 2010 Goals. If you look at the very top, because I was making money, but I'm like, I got to have a goal. I got to know where I'm going. So this is my client list from 2013. I don't know what the number at the bottom is. It's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 grand a month. Looks like 30 clients probably represent, because one of those clients has 45 car dealers. You'll see in the black, there's two black lines. You see those? Those are two clients I lost that year. You see the bottom where it stair steps, those are clients I gained. So in that year, I lost two clients. I gained four. This is three years later. It's the same story. I don't lose clients. I lost two clients. I gained three or four. Why am I telling you this? Because I want you to see that what I'm telling you has been practiced and tried and true. There's a lot of people on the Internet that are gurus, that are coaches, that are experts, that started this stuff a year ago. And what they're telling you is because they have one little piece of success on something, and it's not proven. So, Matt, how do I gain and retain clients? So I'm going to talk about a couple things. And Jason Swank, by the way, do you guys follow him on YouTube? Jason spoke earlier. Dude's videos are gold. Watch him all the time. Love it. Got his book on my desk. Uh, he's true inspiration. But he talked about some key things. That a lot of times, like, when you get a client, that's a bad thing if you don't do it correctly. It's typically your fault. There's four things I've found here that I'm going to get to that help you gain and retain clients. Number one is knowing when to say no to the wrong client. There are people that don't like dudes that wear orange shoes every day. If they don't roll like that, I don't roll with them. She laughed. Nobody else did. Understanding success in their eyes. It's like I tell our trainers at the gym. Everybody wants to get in shape for a different reason. It might be a bathing suit. It might be to look better to friends. It might be to lose diabetes. Tracy came up to me at my gym three years ago, came up, she's crying, I'm like, oh shit, because it's usually like somebody lost a job, they don't have money to pay the membership, and I'm a, I'm a, a big hearted person, I give up free memberships all the time, and I said, what's up Tracy, she goes, Matt, I just got back from the doctor, I'm not diabetic anymore, you know, her goals are different than Bridget Nichols who wants to get 20 muscle ups unbroken, so you got to understand success in your client's eyes, you've got to set up expectations, like, I had the expectation set up that we might, me and my daughter dipped $300 shoes and spray paint and water from a YouTube video that they were going to be ruined. And my wife's like, you're cool with that? I'm like, I'll take 300 bucks for pages time all day long. And it was worth it. We got badass shoes. Now, her looked better, by the way. Look them up on Instagram. She crushed me. And then last but not least, onboarding a client. How many people in here have taken on a client and a month later realized you didn't tell them half the shit you should have? Anybody? I, I did it a couple weeks ago. I had a client that called me like, I don't get clients call me or office client called me on a weekend like, hey, what about this? I'm like, oh, I didn't tell you that. We didn't onboard them correctly. And we have a process, but Matt Plapp didn't follow it. So those are four key items. But there's one big thing that matters at the end of the day, results. People don't stay at my gym if they don't see results. Clients don't stay with your agency if they don't see results. Consumers don't go to your restaurant again if it continues to suck. So let's talk about this. April 2015, Nick Ellison owns Hoff Warehouse Newport, Pittsburgh, and Columbus. Awesome dude, multimillionaire. I think he's the second largest landowner in the United States behind Ted Turner. Great dude. We were spending a million two on their behalf across three cities. Their breweries did about 25 million total. They were one of my biggest clients in the restaurant business. They hated social media. He said, Matt, and this is after spending a million two, we're spending four grand a month on on Facebook, a million two total on radio, TV, Reds, Bengals, you name it. He goes, Matt, I can't deposit likes. You've proved to me that somebody from Facebook or Instagram or YouTube will walk in here and eat food, and I'll, and I'll I'll take your word for it. 
So what happened then was we did a great promotion. Everybody heard of the ama uh, amazing American holiday, National Pretzel Day? <laughs> National Pretzel Day was coming up. Hofbrauhaus House was a German beer house. Great. Number one P-Mix item was, which is product mix, is beer, cheese, and pretzels. So we did a half-price promo. We made three Facebook posts. We did three boosted posts, $50 each. 18 grand in trackable sales the next day. Nick called me and said, Matt, I can deposit 18 grand. Keep doing your thing. I'm off your back. We went on that point to have a quarter million dollar budget on Facebook. The biggest aspect of what you do is proving your results. This is my fifth or sixth generation of my dashboard through uh, Zapier and Google Sheets. Minichat makes this possible. My speech today is gain and retain. Well, you gain and retain based on results. You get results based on proving what you do. And having a product like Messenger and Minichat that allows you to tie things in, conversations in, allows you to do it. You guys saw the example that uh, Brett and Jace did, the redeem button, click and do it. I think the first time I saw the redeem button was Mackenzie Lieberman, I don't know, two years ago or three years ago. She mentioned it on an interview with Nick Robbins. You remember that? And I was like, I had seen some things. I saw she did it. I'm like, okay, I get that part. I get this part. That's how that comes in here. It's pretty simple. What you do once you get the data is, is key, though. What I found out, though, is what I thought mattered didn't necessarily work. Because my dashboard only made sense to Matt Platt. Like, literally. There's about 300 agencies now doing my program. Most of them would be like, Matt, what does this mean? My restaurant clients. Matt, I have no clue what this dial means, what that dial means, what this means. So I called in my backup. I called in Peter Wiley, who, is that fuzzy? Yeah, it's fuzzy. He's, he's blurred out. He's in the witness text program. Peter and his brother own like 108 locations. We have about 56 of them as clients. He came in and explained to me what was wrong with our dashboard at a meetup. Who was at the meetup in Cincinnati when he came? Luis? Doug? Bunch of people here. Haley? I think you're here. He came in. And spoke and told us and gave me some great insights. Spent about 100 hours with me over the course of a couple months. And helped me come up with something that was better. Turn the next Peter. Peter, where are you at? Peter Paul. Where's he at? Back there, my man. We flew him in from the Philippines. Everybody say hi to Peter. Hi, Peter. I then went to Peter Paul, who joined my program last March in 18. And I said, hey, I got all these ideas. You've got some great ideas. He's an automation genius. If you need help automate, he's, I'm trying to get him to automate my wife and me dating more. Haven't figured that out yet. There's not a staff yet. But Peter helped me make the dashboard better to where now the clients understand that, hey, we had 71,000 impressions. That led to 2,300 engagements. That led to 1,700 uh, opt-ins, 342 redemptions, $3,620 in sales. Just an example. We've got hundreds of these. i got one client right now the last eight weeks is at $48,000 in sales for a six-location pizza restaurant. So to wrap up on that, the big key elements are how to gain and retain clients is understanding success in their eyes, not yours, and then being able to show proof. Because honestly, gaining clients is easy. It's called knocking on doors, shaking hands, kissing babies, making relationships. So right now, my book people in the back, i got two minutes, a uh, minute and a half. I got a free gift for you. I just launched, literally, it came in the mail to here last week. I've got a book. It's called Sell More Slices. It's a gift to every one of you. There's people passing them out somewhere in here. They're back in the back. They're coming. They're going to give every one of you a copy. It is a book. <laughs> Told you I can't dance. It's a book based on my system, but also it's got conversations, case studies. It'll help you understand what clients look for. There's also something in there. Go to page 53 when you get it. Somebody has a $100 bill. 20 of you have $20 bills. The $20 bill is to take somebody near you to coffee or lunch and, and treat them and learn about their business. There's also 20 golden tickets in there that are free stuff. You'll see in the back, come to our booth. Free coaching sessions, free swag. I've got shirts, all sorts of stuff out there. To wrap up. What have I learned from the 300 plus agencies I work with? This was my journey. How many people got scared when Messenger made the changes a year ago, six months ago, and last month? Who, who in the hell thought, oh shit? I was doing automated fax in 99. I was doing video marketing in 2012. I was doing show this post in 2015. Now it's Messenger and email. 
We don't know if it's going to be Messenger and ManyChat in six months, a year, two years. Build your agency around proven systems, strategies, and ideas around you, around local businesses, and around results, and you'll be good. That's all I got. See you later.